Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting tutorial. In this one, a long awaited and highly requested video, how to use Visual Studio Code to write scripts, how to install it, set up the environment and everything. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at how we can install it and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm doing it on my Mac to show for those of you who can't have extend script, life can be made a lot better with Visual Studio Code. So we're going to be installing it, learning how to set up the extend script debugger extension, as well as how to run scripts where we can then simply do something like uh, run our alert.jsx script. And once we have that linked to After Effects, it's going to then execute it and run it inside of the program. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub for coding updates and Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, you can click on the link in the description and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. I don't have it installed on my Mac, but uh, I do my, all my Discord on my main PC. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP on YouTube. And this will give you cool perks like uh, weekly VIP streams, uh, monthly streams for other types of members, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. All right, so to get started, we need to Google Visual Studio Code. And this doesn't matter if you're on Mac or Windows. It's going to work on both pretty much the same exact way. Then we'll go ahead and just click on download. If you're not familiar, Visual Studio Code is just a free generalized coding program that we can write all sorts of code in. And in my case, I have a Mac, so I'll download Visual Studio for my Mac. It gives you some getting started tips and stuff if you're not super familiar with coding, but I'm just gonna go ahead and download that to my computer. And once that's finished, we can go ahead and double click on it to unzip it, or you can open it up in your folder to unzip it. Uh, one thing I actually noticed when I uninstalled this so I can reinstall and show how to set up from scratch is oftentimes when you install this on your Mac, it will install it in kind of whatever drive you choose it in. Once you've downloaded the program, you'll have this zip file. So then we'll want to unzip it, obviously. And basically when this unzips, we're gonna wanna make sure that we move it to the correct folder so that we can run it. Uh, in my last installation, I noticed that I actually installed it in my downloads folder, which caused a few other problems with like writing files and stuff, which we can fix here. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and move this into my applications folder. Then I'll go into my applications and scroll down to Visual Studio Code. Now the program's gonna launch for us, first time setup. It's gonna verify and all that. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and say keep in doc because this is gonna be my main editor here besides Sublime Text. And once it's loaded, we can say, yes, I wanna open this, it's from the internet, I acknowledge that. And now we should have it loading up for us. You can select things like your themes and settings. In my case, I have some preferences already set up because of my last installation. So I'll just go ahead and close all of these windows so we can start basically from scratch. Now, what we wanna first do is go over to this extensions tab here. This is all the extensions inside of the marketplace that we have access to. If we just go ahead and type in extend script, this is gonna bring up sort of all of the installations we can do for extend script or scripting. The one we want to use here is Extend Script Debugger, and this is uh, developed by Adobe. All we have to do is click on Install, and it's going to very quickly install this for us. Now, you might be wondering why there's only three stars for this. I gotta say, that's probably for a few reasons. There's a couple of common bugs which we're going to address in this video, but uh, there are some missing features that you'll notice. Unsupported scenarios, profiling, uh, object model viewer, which I'm a big fan of, functions and auto completion, and scripts panels. So a lot of the stuff that's available in Extend Script is not going to be available here, but this will allow you to interface with Adobe programs, test them relatively quickly, and uh, have access to a lot of that code base. So as you can see, based on the installation instructions, it says install the extension, which we just did. Then we need to restart VS Code depending on our version and we want to open the folder containing the project we're working on. So just to do that, I'll quit VS Code, and now I'll relaunch VS Code, and one of the main things about using VS Code is it wants you to store all of your um, 
scripts in a single folder so you can then access them quite easily. So in order to open a folder on your Mac, you'll say open. I think on Windows it might say open folder, but we'll just say open. And then I'll navigate to my folder where I have a whole bunch of scripts located. Here it is, and I'll click on open. And now what this will do is if we scroll down here in our Explorer, you can see all the files built into this folder. So now that I've loaded my folder, I have a couple of JSX files in here, which is perfect. Um, now what we can do is go to the debugging tab, which is this play button with a little bug on it. And as you can see, it's asking us to create a launch JSON file. So we'll go ahead and first click on that and we'll click on extend script debug. This is going to create a launch JSON file which allows us to launch our script inside of whatever Adobe program we choose. We're going to go a little bit over this in the future here to explain how we can run specific files, but this is the basic setup we have. So now if we go back to our Explorer, and I'm going to open up this alert script here, which just is going to alert hello there. And in order to debug this and run this in After Effects, well, first, you, if you don't have After Effects open, it's going to give you the opportunity to open it. If not, we can go to run, start debugging, and I just like to use the shortcut F5, or on a Mac it's often Fn plus F5, and now it's going to give you this box. This is where we input the name of the script we want to run. So I'm going to say alert.jsx, and because we're referencing this, this folder here on the left side with all these scripts, we can choose any of these we want to launch. So I'll say alert.jsx, and as you can see, we can't start a session without an active target in engine, select an active target. This means that down here, we need to select our target application to be whatever our version of Adobe program we're using. In my case, I'm using Adobe After Effects 2020, so I'll select that. Now if we hit F5 again, alert.jsx. Now if we wait a second, we're now going to execute our script inside of our chosen program. And just to show you that this works with other scripts, um, if you look inside of here, I have one called uh, Han Motion Type, which is a script I'm working on. And you can type in Han Motion Type.jsx. And then it's going to launch that script inside of whatever program we choose. This is Nate from the future after I recorded the video talking but I do want to go over one more important thing that a lot of users might find an issue uh, if they run a whole bunch of different scripts. So if you're using Extend Script Debugger, uh, there is a good amount of documentation when you click on it inside of the extensions panel. And one thing that is very common that I was very frustrated about at first but figured out how to fix is when you get an error called error number 15, can't initialize the target. This is when you hit F5 to run your script and you choose like After Effects or Premiere and it says error 15, can't initialize the target. Even if the program's up and running or even if you have the debugger bring it up for you, you can still get this issue and have problems connecting. For me, the reason this, this happened is because of something called code helpers. You can see these start to build up as we run a whole bunch of different scripts. So if you ever have a problem with error 15, first restart After Effects, restart whatever your program is, restart Visual Studio Code, and then kill these code helper processes by hitting this uh, X inside of your activity monitor. Or if you're on Windows, you can use your um, task manager to kill these code helpers. Um, if you kill all of them, it might kill your Visual Studio Code window, but this will allow the space required in order to uh, connect to the actual program. So make sure you restart the program, uh, restart Visual Studio Code, and kill the code helpers. So those are the basics of how you can run your script. Now let's look a little bit more in depth about how this setup works. Inside of your launch JSON, if you're finding it annoying that every time you need to type in the name of your script, well we can get around that. Instead of having this here, which says command ask for script name, we can type in the script name here. So if I only want to run alert.jsx, I can say alert.jsx because this is referencing our workspace folder, which is this that's here that's loaded. And then we can just say the file alert.jsx inside of it. I'll save that JSON file. And now if I run the script, 
Once we go into After Effects, you can see we're going to run that script. Do we actually need to load After Effects to do that though? Because it kind of hangs there for a second. We might have to actually go into After Effects for it to execute. Let me try it with my other one. It has a UI on motion type. If I execute, it doesn't launch After Effects as you can see. But if I go into After Effects, it launches the script. So that may be another limitation that people are complaining about. But if you want to, you can choose a specific script. You just need to make sure you open the, the program's window, or you can keep it at uh, dollar sign command ask for script name, by which whenever we launch it, we can type in the name of the script we want to launch and uh, have it launch automatically without having to load up the window. Now some last words on using Visual Studio Code. Um, for scripting, basically, it's going to do the job along with a few of these limitations. And in my personal opinion, the aesthetics of typing on a Mac can sometimes be nicer. Uh, and when you can't use extend script, that's not very nice. The dark themes and other optional customization are really cool. Uh, it, it, that, those really put extend script in the dust because they only have a light capable UI. The big advantage to extend script is the object model viewer, which lets you view a whole list of all types of things that are accessible in different programs, as well as script UI and a few other features. But just in terms of general uh, text editors, Visual Studio Code is pretty awesome. And we can do a lot of things like um, maybe we wanted to save our i equals zero, our e is equal to two. And what we can also do, which we can do in um, extend script, but is also available in here, is we can use breakpoints. So if I run alerts.jsx, you can see it's going to stop here on a breakpoint. And one of the other cool things about Visual Studio is uh, while you're running and debugging, you can see variables. So that basically means you can view all the local and global variables in your script. And then you can do things like uh, jump to the next breakpoint or jump forward and then you can see everything that's coming through in the variables and in the call stack. The last thing I want to go over is the watch capabilities. Alongside seeing what's in the call stack and the variables uh, that we can see live as we're breakpointing through or just running the code, uh, we can also add things to the watch and watch live uh, what the values of those variables are as they change. So if I wanted to, I could create a variable here called comp or comp name set this equal to app.project.activeitem.name, assuming we have a composition selected. And that's a different method here. So now if I go ahead and run, I'm going to save and run this, alert.jsx. We should get a breakpoint here on comp name. If I want to see what i is, I can hover over it while I'm breakpointed, and it tells me the value. That's one way to see the values. Or if you want them displayed here on the side, we can add an expression. I'm going to add i, and I'm going to add e. These two variables will now just be displayed, regardless if they have values or not. And if I want to, I can also add comp name. As you can see right now, it's undefined. That's because we've stopped before we set the value. If I go ahead and step forward to the next line, you can see now we get our comp name and we have access to that, which is very, very helpful in some situations. And if you design plugins or do C++, this is much more up that alley as well. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to install and use Visual Studio Code for scripting, uh, whether you have a Mac or a PC. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the GitHub link where you can follow us for coding updates. Follow us on Instagram down there as well for other live updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, make sure you click the link below. Join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, the link for that is in the description. You can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and help us out financially. Thanks again for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time.